Um, I found a few pa things in that passage which are actually relevant to the coronavirus situation and our situation in it. Um, it tells us, first of all, as I said earlier, that the invasion which is going to come upon Assyria, which the people were afraid of, uh, God says through Isaiah not to be afraid of it, for God is with us. And the word God is with us in Hebrew is Immanuel, which means Emmanuel, God with us. And he tells them in verse 12 not to call this a conspiracy, not to be afraid of their threats. Now, when we talk about what's happening in the coronavirus situation, there's a lot of talk about conspiracy theories and that we're under a, some kind of a conspiracy which is aiming at changing our world, threatening our future. And those who take a prophetic line, as I do, can see elements of conspiracy in what's taking place around us. Uh, some people question that and say that if you say that what's happening is uh, leading to some kind of a global world government, you're following an uh, unsure conspiracy theory. Really, we've got a lot of well-meaning world leaders around us who are working for our benefit, giving us the vaccine and hoping to get us out of this trouble we're in and to get us into a good situation. Uh, those who say it's not the case are accused of following some kind of conspiracy theory. I think it's not the case. I think we are heading towards some kind of a uh, really dark period through this situation. And it's being used to some kind of predetermined purpose to bring in kind of controlled society uh, using technology towards the Antichrist government, which is prophesied in Revelation chapter 13. Coming back to Isaiah, he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of this. Fear God. Look to him for your sanctuary, uh, place of safety. And the message of this scripture is actually that if we look to the Lord, if we look to him as our help, then we have one who is going to be strong on our behalf. And he's our place of sanctuary, the place of safety. And as we look at Bible prophecy, sometimes people get a bit alarmed and think, you know, what people like Tony Pierce are saying is really scary. And there are elements which are scary, but also elements which want to put us to put our trust in the Lord and to trust him because he is for us and he is with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah also speaks about uh, the people who are with him, he and his people, his children, being for signs and wonders in Israel. Uh, I don't think that actually means he's going to be performing great signs and wonders, but it means that they themselves are the signs and the wonders. They're the signs of the truth of God. And it means that God's people are actually like a signpost pointing us to the end result, which is the coming of the Messiah, first of all to redeem us, and then coming a second time to judge the world and to bring in his his kingdom and so we ourselves are a sign a signpost given by the lord and he calls us to trust him and to keep his word to find our peace and our safety in him the passage also says he's going to hide his face from those who reject him in which case the coming disaster will cause them to stumble to fall and be broken and he says that those who don't speak according to the law and the testimony i according to the word of god will have no light in them and as we look in the present situation you can see that Around the world, there are a lot of people speaking in the name of God, some of them speaking in the name of Jesus, but they have no light in them because they're not following what the Bible says. And we have a movement towards a kind of world religious system, which I'll speak about a bit later, which is actually has no light in it. It's actually in the darkness. And the people who are following that are actually going to end up not being uh, in a, place, a good place, but they're going to end up uh, cursing God, it says in this passage, and being driven into darkness. And the Bible does say that there's a gross spiritual darkness which is coming on the world uh, through this and through other crises which are now hitting us. Uh, New Testament describes it as the Great Tribulation. The Old Testament speaks about the time of Jacob's trouble, time of undoubted trouble in which there's only one way to be saved from it, and that's through faith in Yeshua, in Jesus the Messiah. And Isaiah 9 verse 2 has some uh, prophecy about Jesus coming, Jesus coming to be the one who will be the great light on the people who are walking in the darkness. As we look at the darkness around us, we can give thanks that we have the light of Jesus to give us his light, his truth. As the famous prophecy of verse 6, which speaks about, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, speaking of his first coming as the Messiah, that he would have a name, which is the wonderful counsellor, the one who brings the counsel of God into our situation, who is himself the mighty God. So he is Emmanuel, God with us. He's also the everlasting father, uh, the father of everlasting life, the author of life, and the prince of peace. And he's the one who's come already to give us these things. 
and he is the one upon whom the, the says the government will be upon his shoulder. Uh, so if you're a bit miffed about the present state of the government, which I am and which most people in the world are, then you can look up because there is a time coming when the government of the world is going to be upon his shoulder. He's going to rule. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our God, of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. And it speaks about the increase of his government and peace that will bring no end to that as he reigns upon the throne of David, which is a prophecy also of the second coming of Jesus. So this prophecy in Isaiah speaks of both the first and the second coming of the Messiah and looks forward to the time when the Messiah is going to sit on David's throne and reign and give peace and justice. I included the next verses because I saw something quite interesting in those. Uh, said earlier that those people who are trusting in the other side of things, who are not believing in Jesus, are actually going to head for a real disappointment, uh, to terror in fact. And those who hope in the Antichrist forces will be let down and they will suffer terribly as they suffer because of their wrong choice they've made. And the call now, of course, is to make the right choice, to believe in Jesus. But in this passage, it has this word which is given to the people of Israel and to the inhabitants of Ephraim and Samaria, that's the northern kingdom. And they're saying in pride and arrogance, the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with hewn stones. And that sort of phrase actually struck me, that uh, these people are saying, okay, we've had some measure of disaster has come upon us, but we're going to rebuild with hewn stones. We're going to rebuild something better. Now, it's clear that this rebuilding is not actually something which God blesses. Uh, They're doing it in pride and arrogance in their own strength. And it's something which will actually end up uh, facing the anger of the Lord and his anger will be upon it. And I was thinking about this. um, What's the phrase which we are hearing from world leaders today, from the global reset people? It's build back better. What are they saying they're going to do? They're going to see this disaster has happened, but now we're going to build something back better, a better society. And it's just struck me that this is uh, being done not in the obedience to the Lord, not with reference to him, but in the pride and the arrogance of man and trusting in human uh, power, not in God's power. And the attempt to build back better, which uh, the Global Reset people and others are talking about, even our own government's talking about. And if you pay attention, you'll find that an incredible number of world leaders today are using this phrase, build back better. I don't know if you notice that. Uh, But it's happening. Even Boris said something about building back better uh, recently. So this idea that we're going to build something back which will be better than it was before. But actually, according to what the Bible says, it will end up not with something better, but something even worse, and will lead actually into the time of the Great Tribulation. And therefore, we should have to hope in the Lord Jesus and his Messiah. Um, This building back better occurs to me actually may be successful for a while. And sometimes we think that it's all going to be a disaster. It may actually start off quite well. And there may be a a temporary solution, but it will be something which is doomed to fall, as in the Babylon system, and will be the object of the Lord's anger. And when when it's falling, it will be replaced by the second coming of Jesus. So the word for us here is to be faithful to the Lord, to look for his coming kingdom, when the government will be upon his shoulder, and his government will not fail as the world system's government will fail.